the FWC, a staple amongst the entertainment world. Something that became common and expected. All headed for illustriousness and prominence. Come se motion de board. Come treo case. Le lam de sino le schema. And then it was gone. Throughout the years, new shows appeared. A new generation of wrestlers determined to be the cornerstone of champions. Big events, championship victories, household names created. Ballet Concave de Mon Visage. Cum se uita e creva evec un silo case. But in the cracks of time, a secret lies. A secret ready to arrive when the time is right. Et c'est tu raconter le douleur. The staple is ready to return. Le lam et digno le li. Perhaps we only leave so we may once again arrive to get a bird's eye view of what it means to be alive. For there is beauty in return. Oh, how wonderful! How strange to see that everything is different. Se que su salamo toa que a son che. You better strap yourself in. Tonight. Jet Tornado, Jet Lee, Sune, The Foundation, take on Corey Taylor and Jay and Mark Bristol. In a six-man tag team match, can Corey Taylor and the Briscoe Brothers stop the Foundation's control of the FWC? Or will the Foundation cement themselves as FWC's top brass. Plus, Celeste Bonnie takes on Lucy Lou, Paige Van Zandt, and Zoe Zelda in a four corners match. Will she successfully defend her title, or will someone walk out as new FWC Women's Champion? Take the stage, Rock's Foundation, and it starts right now. And now, 
Live from New York City, FWZ presents Take the Stage, Rooks Foundation. The FWZ is on the air, and we are live here in the zone. 14,000 jam-packed this arena as the FWZ continues its legacy as the prettiest show in all of professional wrestling. We are here in New York City, and it is electric inside this arena tonight. This is the FWZ, and this is FWZ Take the Stage Rocks Foundation. Our main event for the evening sees the foundation take on Corey Taylor and the Briscoe Brothers in a six-man tag team match. These three men have been targets from the foundation and Kid Rock, the owner of the FWZ. Corey Taylor and the Briscoes want to get their hands on the foundation. Celeste Barnier has one hell of a task ahead of her as she has three other women gunning for her championship. Tonight, a four corners match to determine who is going to walk away with the FWZ Women's Championship. In addition to that, we have four other matches on the card, including this one. Tenacious D and Suchi Blade are going to battle it out for the vacant FWZ Tag Team Championship. Suchi Blade wants Tenacious D to get serious, but I know that the serious business at hand is that we will have brand new Tag Team Champions. Welcome everyone to this a colossal event. I am the Jamco, joining you once again. And it is a great pleasure of mine to be with you here tonight as we kick off the show with a match that was announced on our Facebook page just very recently. A four-man battle royal to determine the number one contender for Jet Li Celebrity X Championship. And look who has come out first, Brendan Frazier. Brendan Frazier making his FWZ debut in this match. We're going to see two new wrestlers to the FWZ and two already established superstars here. Brendan Frazier already here. As here comes the second man in his debut here at the FWZ, Frank Ocean. Got Frank Ocean, the two-time Grammy Award winner and Soul Train winner. And Frank Ocean joining Brendan Frazier, the old cowboy from Indiana. This match very, very simple. Battle Royal, four men. Take your opponent over the top rope. Both feet touch the floor, and you are out of here. Two more participants that we're going to be waiting for. And I know the next man that's coming out right now. An FWZ original. Straight from the west side. Ice Cube. I want everybody who's watching YouTube live on the FWZ Collection Channel to put your three damn fingers up for the west side. 
match. Although, as I recall, SQ, that's actually won a match here in the FWC, but uh, don't tell him that I said that, because he'll, he'll probably beat me up. Waiting for the last participant. Wait, what? What? What the, what the hell? You gotta be kidding me, Dr. Phil? What? Hold on just a damn minute. Dr. Philip McGraw is here in the FWZ, and I can't believe that I just uttered those words. He's just like he's going into a goddamn karate fight. Does he know that this is professional wrestling? Wow. Well, I guess, uh... I guess he wants to get his hands on the Celebrity X Championship. The man's got a PhD in, uh, clinical psychology. I don't know what the hell that's gonna help him out tonight, but... Everybody's gonna start somewhere. So here we go then, Battle Royal, who's going to be the number one contender for the Celebrity X Championship? You look at the powerhouse of Brendan Fraser, I wouldn't expect Brendan Fraser to, to look like that, the man looks like a damn tech, as he's about to lift Ice Cube up, but looks like a power bomb straight down, and now even Dr. Phil's getting in on the action, I don't know what the hell to expect from Dr. Phil, it's a big old splash! From Brendan Fraser to Dr. Phil, Frank Ocean has Ice Cube. Ice Cube's in trouble. He's getting thrown over the top rope. He's getting pushed over. Can he hold on? What? Oh, what? Ice Cube is the first to be eliminated. My dog is the first one out of here. I can't believe this. The crowd, the crowd booing around me here. They're not, they're not happy about this. Ice Cube, uh, a fan favorite here on the FWC. And he's the first out. Well, that just leaves Frank Ocean, Brendan Fraser, and the fact that I'm going to say Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil's got Frank Ocean up, and he's swinging him around. Frank Ocean's been swung right around. It's Dr. Phil now. He's got his hands on Brendan Fraser. Dr. Phil trying to eliminate Brendan Fraser here. I don't know what the hell I would do if Dr. Phil was a number one contender for the... Celebrity X Chamber. I can't even believe I'm uttering those words, Dr. Phil, on the FWC television here. Yeah. Frank Ocean and Brendan Fraser now got to hook up with a big suplex from Brendan Fraser onto Frank Ocean. And Dr. Phil hanging on the apron here. Don't roll off too quickly or you'll fall out. And now Brendan Fraser with the power as he just. Oh, wait, Frank Ocean counters with a Horikarana as Dr. Phil's back in there, slams Frank Ocean back down. And Dr. Phil <laughs> taunting to the crowd. What the hell is he doing? And ho oh, ho! A big old kick from Frank Ocean straight to the face of Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, welcome to the FWZ. And Dr. Phil is out of here. The crowd happy that Dr. Phil is out of this match. We're down to just Brendan Fraser. And Frank Ocean, Dr. Phil, not happy about being eliminated. Maybe you should take some more time learning the craft of professional wrestling than that little talk show that he does, trying to save people's lives. But the task at hand here is Frank Ocean, Brendan Fraser, in the ring. Who's going to eliminate the other to become the Celebrity X champion number one contender? Going to be going on to face Jet Lee. Brendan Fraser has Frank Ocean on the ropes. Same way Frank Ocean and Ice Cube and Frank Ocean is out of here. Brendan Fraser wins this match. He is the number one contender for the Celebrity X Championship. You see there, Brendan Fraser just pushing Frank Ocean straight over the top rope. Frank Ocean is out. 
But Brendan Fraser's going to be the number one contender for a future championship match against Jet Li. So the Celebrity Champion, Brendan Fraser's first match. And he's already got himself a championship matchup. Great debut and a great opportunity for Brendan Fraser here. As we now switch for the first of our advertised matches. And this has redemption written all over it. You can Jack take it on Outcast. Outcast repeatedly targeting Jack with you can Jack's tag team partnership and friendship on the rocks. You can Jack, the premier tag team in the FWZ, atop the tag team ladder. Tenacious D advance in the tag team tournament. Outcast, FWZ's newest tag team. Sucha Blade advance in the tag team tournament. Silverlight picks up the win against Jack. And they haven't had the greatest track history when it comes to matches in the FWZ. They've lost two matches now. But Jack is hoping to change all that tonight. Wait a minute. What the hell is this? Is that Outcast? What are they doing out here? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell are they doing? They just took out Ice Cube. Where is Yuke? Why have Outcast disrupted this match? And where is Yuke to save his partner? We probably want to make a statement. At first it looked like they were with Ice Cube, but then they attacked. Both Jack and Ice Cube. You can still not come out here to help Jack. What's the damn problem? Yeah. 
contacting at the FWC. And since they arrived here, the FWC did about a very bad attitude as of late, and they still have not explained why they keep going after Jack and Yuke playing mind games, attacking Jack from behind, haven't even opened their mouth to explain their actions. But it is this team here who wants to get their hands on Outcast, and that'll be Yuke and Jack. Well, this all started when Outcast came after Jack. Oh, he had a match. You did not come to Jack's rescue. Outcast playing mind games and going after Jack from behind. And this is, well, this has tested you and Jack's relationship. We've had tests along the way, but I believe that those are tests that any tag team can have. I've watched these two be a tag team for over 10 years here on the FWZ and I know that if there's one thing that they can do that has come together and fight for the same cause now what I must explain here is that this match is not a normal tag team moves none of these competitors will be waiting on the ring apron only mackerel is Andre 3000 and the ref just got in the way as all four of these are about to beat the hell out of each other FWZ officials have declared that they cannot be contained in this ring with the emotion that is at stake. But a three count fall, a submission is required for this match as all four of these competitors are going to be in the same ring at the same time. You got Jack here going after Big Boy. He's going to get some revenge on these two after being pummeled from behind a few weeks ago. Get some revenge on both of them. And I know this is going to be one hell of a scrub of the match as Big Boy has just got Jack's head and he's just jerking it back. Outcare is a very successful unit. Always on the same page. Show a little bit of aggressiveness. Don't show no class. Don't show any remorse towards Yuke and Jack. But one thing you can Jack have is Jack is a tremendous athlete absolute fluid in that squared circle as you can see now as he just locks it and look at him showing off that is what I'm talking about the athleticism of Jack in this ring Yuke a little bit different more of a powerhouse and is that powerhouse that's good oh my goodness as I mentioned the fists just knock it down Andre 3000 and he's just jamming him straight into the apron absolutely wreaking havoc on Andre 3000 you're gonna make outcast regret even looking at you can Jack and that is what should have happened all those weeks ago when you should have come out and helped Jack show this replay here of just him Put, laying in the fists, laying in the damn hell raising into Andre 3000's head. As both these teams are now on the outside, as Big Boy is dragging Yuke over to the apron as he just locks in that leg. And a big suplex from Andre 3000. Big Boy, wait a minute, he's taking up the other announce table. He's about to take one of these men and put him through that table. These teams absolutely want a piece of each other. This is going to be one hell of a match, a scrap match, as these teams are going to scrap against each other. As you see the big old knee from Nuke to the outside, and a DDT to Jack from Andre 3000. Yuke on the outside, and a big super kick as you just heard there from RJ3000 onto Jack as a pinfall as Yuke comes in and breaks up the pin. Big boy with a big suplex to Yuke as RJ3000 is going to take care of Jack with a reversal as he just shoulder tackles him straight down to the canvas with a big old clothesline. 
from Andre the Thousand. And oh, 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 you there taking out both members of Outcast as Jack crawls with the pin. And it's just a two count there. Holy mackerel, you see the power, the power as you just grab those two fists and he just took both of the teams out as a sling bay. Swift comes from Uke onto Big Boy. Is this what it's going to take to put away Outcast? You going for the pin on Big Boy. Andre 3000, picking the pin as Uke now turns his attention to Andre 3000 with the DDT. Jack coming back at this match. Coming for the scraps of Big Boy as Zeke's now got Audrey 3000 in the submission. He's taking his head and he's jerking it back, looking to just bend the back, bend the lower back of Audrey 3000. But Audrey 3000 manages to get out of that hold. There's a suplex from Jack. Right down. Look at that pile driver as he just jacks him down. Drops him right on his freaking head. And that's going to knock you out for days. As Jack is the only remaining man standing tall as Yuke and Big Boy crawl towards the ring, crawl towards the ropes, looking to get themselves back up. As both of them with their both finishing maneuvers at the same time, Big Boy now going for the pin on Yuke. And just a two count as Yuke managed to stay in his beautiful, beautiful wrestling there as you saw Big Boy outcast just using this finishing maneuvers at the same time look at that pow beautiful sto from both these men and that is something i gotta commend them for beautiful beautiful moves in the middle of that ring but yuke the soul man in the middle of this ring andre 3000 coming in jack's about to cut him off both team what What is he doing? What the hell is going on here? What? Why did you just hit Jack for? Oh my god, what the hell? What in good names God is going on? You just hit Jack! And Andre 3000 goes to the pin! Outcast have just won this match! I don't understand. You just hit Jack from behind for no reason and he's just staring at Andre 3000! What the hell is he doing? What? Oh, come on. Is he really going to do that to his to his friend? To his tag team partner of 10 years? What the hell is he doing? The man snapped. The man has gone mad. Referee, get that damn steel chair off him. What the hell is he doing? My God, what crash. What in God's name can that human being be from this planet? Do you have no conscience? Do you have no heart? Do you have no soul, you son of a bitch? The locker room is off notice. Filthy Tom Lawyer is headed to the FWZ. There backstage is the foundation. That team will be in the main event tonight as they take on the Briscoe Brothers and Corey Taylor. It is gang warfare for those men. The Foundation talking tactics. You gotta wonder what is up Kid Rock's sleeve as he seems to always have a plan. As you see the FWC World Champion Jet Tornado, the Celebrity X Champion the Jet, Jet Lee, and their opponents there, the Briscoe Brothers. And I'm currently being told, however, that Corey Taylor is not here yet. He should be here shortly. We'll keep you updated later on to his arrival. But he better hurry up. 
Hopkins got about an hour and a half before this show finishes. Moving on to the FWZ Ignition Championship situation. FWZ officials have decided that Silverlight is still planned to defend the Ignition Championship against an unknown opponent after Camera Black, who was the original contender in this match, was fired on Event Horizon this past week. And it was Cameron Black that stated that he would not join the foundation. But in Kid Rock's own words, Kid Rock fired Cameron Black, which took him out of this match. So right now, we don't know who is going to be challenged in Silverlight for the FWZ Ignition Championship. But one thing that I do know is that that ran right there, Silverlight, the FWZ Ignition Champion, is one of the best athletes in the FWZ. I don't know how Silverlight is going to plan for someone that he doesn't even know is going to face. Especially if he'd already planned to face Cameron Black tonight. But I guess we're going to find out tonight who's going to be. Is it someone in the FWZ locker room? Is it somebody not in the FWZ locker room? Silverlight's pacing that ring as we await the opponent. Who's it going to be? What? Oh my goodness! I am stunned! Even if I listed the accomplishments of this man, it wouldn't justify the greatness of his career. The single greatest super junior heavyweight in the world in history of all time, Jushin Thunder Liger. This man's career has spanned more than three decades and he has wrestled over 4,000 matches. I know that he's looking to retire next year in 2020 and what an honor it is to have him in the FWZ. And what an honor it is for Silverlight to have one of the last matches with Jushin Liger of his career. The ovation for both these men just proves what these people think of both these men. Silverlight, the FWC Ignition Champion, going up against Jushin Liger. I still can't believe that. The 11 time Super Junior Heavyweight Champion, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. What a match this is going to be, and what an honor it is for Silverlight to go against Jushin Liger.
but take absolutely nothing away from that young man Silverlot. He is the best in the business, the best in the FWZ, and he is best they come in terms of in-ring competition. But Jushin Liger, the veteran here, I remember commenting a while ago, Empire Wrestling's one-year anniversary. You should go check that out on YouTube. He was there. And I saw that man lift up nearly 300 pounds of Samoa Joe, the Samoa Submission Machine, as a little splash right there from Silverlight on Jushin Liger. And I said there, as I still believe now, do not take your eyes on Jushin Liger. The veteran knows every trick of the book, past, present, future. You better step up your A game if you want to be able to defeat Jushin Thunder Liger. It's a big old close line from Silverlight down to Jushin Liger. Silverlight got everything to lose in this match. Losing to a legend, but also making sure that he keeps that ignition championship. So TDT from Jushin Liger down to Silverlight. I'll tell you something, this is going to be one hell of a clinic here tonight. Silverlight, one of the greatest athletes in the FWZ, going up against Jushin Liger, who will wrap you up like a damn pretzel, I can tell you that. Yeah, but I want to thank everybody here who's watching this show live on YouTube, to the subscribers who subscribe to this show. We haven't been on this channel for quite a while, in a few months. I mean, we've already hit 2,000 subscribers. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in each time there is a show of FWZ. I want to thank the fans watching around the world as a DDT from Silverlight as a pin. Early pin here from Jushin Maiga. I'm barely a one count. I want to thank the fans all the way from South America, right up to Western Europe. Thank you for being a part of the FWZ. And Jushin Liger now, beautiful, beautiful top rope move. As Jushin Liger is looking to, to wrestle rings around Silver. And what an extraordinary event here tonight. Close line from Silverlight. For FWZ take the stage, Rocks Foundation. Technically, our first colossal event of the year, 2019. And we'll have some news later on concerning take the stage for 2020. Jushin Liger and Silverlight on the outside. Slams him right to the outside. The referees count here. Both of these men need to get back in the ring. As it doesn't matter what you do on the outside. The pin needs to be in the ring. Silverlight going up now. And you can just see Silverlight just playing mind games with Jushin Liger. Just saw the athleticism. But Jushin Liger has seen it all before. Over his three decades of a career. Silver Light needs to get his head in here. Get his head in the damn game. Silver Light going up top as Jushin Liger counters hit. That is the legend, the veteran moves of Jushin Liger. Jushin Liger now. Irish whips him to the ropes. And a beautiful drop kick from Jushin Liger. And another drop kick from Jushin Liger. As he swaps him down, right down there. Jushin Liger with a belly to belly suplex, beautiful belly to belly suplex, one of the patented moves of Jushin Liger. Jushin Liger has got one of the most devastating power bar as Jushin Liger has gone for submission as he takes to the left leg and Silverlight managed to scrap right back out of it. I'll tell you something, these two men are tit for tat, almost identical to one another as they just counter each other's moves. And pull more and more moves out of their arsenal as now Silverlight just absolutely jacking back that right arm of Jushin Liger's locking that right arm with those big arms, those big biceps as you see there, locking that damn arm like a vice grip. But Jushin Liger's fighting out of it now, fighting out of that grip. Sticks him right over. But you wonder if any damage has been done to that left arm of Jushin Liger. As Silverlight just locked onto that like a damn vice. Jushin Liger fighting back with Silverlight as he Irish whips him to the top rope as Silverlight moves out of the way. Jushin Liger flipping him right straight over for a pin. Silverlight kicks out before even a one count takes place. What is Silverlight 
going to do. Ticket one up. Andrew should like it. <laughs> the flip right around. Only mackerel. The athleticism of these two men is absolutely incredible. And what an honor it is to call this match. I remember watching Jushin Thunder Liger in New Japan Pro Wrestling when I was younger. And here we go, Jushin Liger now taking those both knees and slamming them right to the canvas. Now that is what I was talking about in the expertise of Jushin Liger in professional wrestling. Taking two knees, slapping them into the canvas to do some damage. And a big spine buster from Silverlight as he slams him down. One of the signature moves of Silverlight clearly seeing that when Jushin Liger took those knees he tried to break the foundation of Silverlight's body that's going to be holding up the 200 pounds of Jushin Liger for the spine buster but it doesn't seem that's done much as Jushin Liger goes up for the Liger Bomb Jushin Liger with the Liger Bomb on Silverlight what a thing of beauty let's look at it again look at that 200 pounds as he slams him down is this enough to take the ignition champion from Silverlight but Silverlight Jushin Liger not taking a pin on that Liger Bomb, very unusual. But Silverlight straight back up. I've not seen many men kick out of the Liger Bomb. There's now a close line from Silverlight. Silverlight is pumped up. He's on fire. He's feeling the momentum. That's a big reversal as he rebounds. Silverlight right up to the top rope. And his neck just landed down there as Silverlight's got Juice and Liger in the bottom of the top rope. So he lifts him straight down and just drops him like a bag of sand. As the fans in awe of these two men as they go back and forth just like I am. And look at this, this whole mat wrestling here with Juice and Liger and Silverlight rolling around the ring. Silverlight, an expert at that. Matt wrestling and as a great technician as Jushin Liger goes for a pin that was barely a one count Silverlight needs to be careful to not be in a predicament where he can be locked in to some of those Jushin Liger submissions they are callous and he needs to be cautious especially that beautiful Romero special that circle special where he just bends the back of his opponent that is somewhere you don't want to be as you've got nowhere to go and a big German suplex from Silverlight right onto the back of Jushin Liger as Silverlight makes it look easy Silverlight doing well in the ring for someone who wouldn't have even known Jushin Liger was going to be in this match didn't know anyone was going to be in this match of a list of men you could have wrote down to who it could have possibly been Jushin Liger might not have even been on the list Beautiful once again from Jushin Liger, Silverlight. And one of those predicaments I was talking about earlier. Silverlight planning for Cameron Black that he was scheduled to face. As now, Jushin Liger has got Silverlight up and he lands him right on his back, on his knee. And that is something that is painful and will hurt tomorrow morning. But Silverlight now once again picks him back up. I tell you something, this match, if you follow it with me, is back and forth. No man has shown any weakness. And I can see each and every one of these people in this arena here in New York City is engrossed in this match just like me. You, and there, there is a charisma of Jushin Liger. I tell you something, as we've seen recently the New Japan Pro Wrestling, you don't want to piss Jushin Liger off but you see that that bizarre that dark eager and Silverlight has got Jushin Liger in a figure four leg like only Mackerel Silverlight playing Jushin Liger on his own game of submission moves as Jushin Liger slaps Silverlight slaps him right in the face and gets straight out of that whatever the other man does the other man has got a counter for as the pinfall occurs here as Jushin Liger kicks out of this match Headbutt from Jushin Liger. I was talking earlier about Kinshin Liger, who is the dark alter ego of Jushin Liger. And that is something you do not want to see in this match. That's something more than Silverlock could bargain for. As Jushin Liger. Oh, the referee's knocked out by accident. And he's back up. Good old ref. 
silver right now with an Irish trip to the down buckle. Of course, the pain in the back of Dusan Liger as now Silver Light just bends that left leg right back towards Dusan Liger's head. But that is going to be something that you do not want to feel in the back here. Spine Buster once again. The second Spine Buster in this match from Silver Light on Dusan Liger is. Silverlight feeling the momentum to put Jushin Liger away and retain the FWC Ignition Champion Jushin Liger just crawling to the edge of the rope to think of his next move as Silverlight's up top and Jushin Liger just reverses it once again Silverlight needs to realize that sometimes those high flying moves might not do you any justice as Jushin Liger has been countering high flying moves for all the young lions in Japan for many, many years. And Silverlight tries to suplex, but Jushin Liger suplex him back in the ring. You can feel how tense the emotion in this building as they see two men going to war with each other. Oh, wait a minute, here it is, Silverlight putting him up for a powerbomb, cutting him down to the ring with that cutter, the ace cutter right there by Silverlight. The brightest light, his finishing maneuver has he retained the FWC Ignition Champions a pin. One, two, oh my goodness, and Shushen Liger saves himself as not many of people in the FWC have kicked down to that pattern and finishing maneuver from Silverlight, the brightest light. And now a belly just sweeps it in right round by Shushen Liger. A pin now by Jushin Liger on Silverlight. That's just a near two count there. I don't know what Silverlight is thinking now, but what is next in his game plan as Jushin Liger just kicked out of his finishing maneuver. Back to the drawing board for you, Silverlight. And now Jushin Liger on the apron with Silverlight. Oh my goodness, he just jammed his damn head into the apron. Look at this again. Oh my god. My goodness, check up that that man does not have a concussion. He jammed his damn head straight into that apron. Knocking the sixth sense out of Silverlight. My God, that's that's the aggression. That's a little bit of st darker side. And a Jushin Liger that you don't want to see. Oh my goodness. Don't know if Silverlight's going to be able to continue this match. He jammed his head right in the damn apron. But he seems okay. And he seems just as charismatic as he was before. That's a big left knee into the face. Now Silverlight, you can see those big quads from Jushin Liger. As once again, Jushin Liger knows every luck in that damn book. Jushin Liger just playing with Silverlight, playing with him like he's a student. And this is pretty much what this match is, the student and the master. And now Jushin Liger, look at the way that he's just caught Silverlight's right arm as he bends the back of Silverlight, jerking that, that head back as he just, and Silverlight gets out of it once again. Silverlight has found himself in many predicaments that he needs to get himself out of. And he needs to be damn careful. Because you don't want to be any luck from Jushin Liger, so he'll break your damn back. Just jams Jushin Liger straight into the turnbuckle. Oh my goodness, and another beautiful belly to belly slam from Jushin Liger as Jushin Liger just jams, working on that right hand they did earlier. That's another pinfall here. And just near a two count. Silverlight. Silverlight is still in this thing. Silverlight, everything to lose in this match, as he doesn't want to lose his ignition championship. And here it is once again. We saw this early in the match. Jushin Liger jamming the knees. Jamming those damn knees into the canvas of Silverlight's knees. That is something that Babani cannot withstand. The knees being the foundation that holds up your entire body. Much have lost them. That's it. Beautiful suplex. I should see the strength of Silverlight as he drags Jushin Liger over the top rope. And onto the canvas. Silverlight top rope. Looking for that big old fist. As Jushin Liger moves out of the way. <laughs> he just uses the right hand once again. Another beautiful uppercut. 
And now he's bouncing right back there with a big back suplex. These men back and forth. I tell you, two gladiators and a DDT straight from Silverlight. A silver knight now goes to the top rope, goes for an elbow trap, and he misses once again. Silver light down. Jushin Liger taking the opportunity of the failed elbow drop as Silver light kicks out. As you see, Silver light trying some high moves here, but has not yet connected. Jushin Liger has moved out of the way of every single one of them as a big, big right knee into Silver light head. That head is already damaged earlier on. Here it is. Here it is again. The third. The third jam of knees. Of Silverlight's knees straight into the canvas. Silverlight is in trouble here. Silverlight's been working on them knees. He's been working on the head that he jammed at the ring apron earlier on. Silverlight is in hot water. As this is what I was talking about. Pin once again from Jushin Liger. Silverlight kicks out. This is what I'm talking about, the, the psychology of Jushin Liger. Knows how to wrap you up, knows what to work. And another spine buster, third spine buster of the match. One of the patented moves of Silverlight. You can see him holding his head there. That seems to have kicked in from the DDT into the apron. Silverlight going for the patented move. The Baradis Light. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jushin Liger wheels his way out. And a net breaker straight back down. Silverlight kicking out of that. And now Jushin Liger, what's Jushin Liger on the store now? Here we go. Taking that right back. Left knee, left foot, jam back. Got him in that lock, the anchor lock. As he digs his left knee straight into the back of Silverlight. This is painful, but Silverlight unbelievably gets out of it once again. These men just showing the fortitude that they have. To be have a great stand as ring the DDT once again from Jushin Liger. Another belly to belly suplex from Silverline. Jushin Liger hasn't showed the one move that he hasn't pulled out of his bag right now. That's that Romero special, that circle that he does when he bends the back. But instead, he's doing the same move that he did a couple of minutes ago. He's going to drag and lock in that right ankle, that right foot, the right leg. As Silverlight is in the same position again as he digs that knee. Is Silverlight going to tap out? Will we have a new ignition champion? No, Silverlight out of it once again. Chushin Liger has been working on every part of Silverlight's body. As Silverlight kicks up once again. You talk about the tenacity of Silverlight, he is one tough sub bitch as you can see him getting out of a lot of those submission moves, which not a lot of men can, after having him worked on those knees. Surprised he could walk around like that, but I do believe that the pain is starting to set in from his head, from his brain, when he was just jammed right to the damn apron. As Silverlight takes Jushin Liger to the corner of the ring. But Jushin Liger counters once again. And another counter by Silverlight. These two. Back and forth action here at Take the Stage. Rocks Foundation. This is what I'm talking about. Professional wrestling at its best. Top roof move. And finally Silverlight connects with a high fly move. With an elbow drop at Silverlight. He signals that it's done. Silverlight. He's jamming that right leg, but right to the face of Jushin Liger, pulling on the hamstring there. That's really going to hurt right, right near the quad. Oh my goodness. But Jushin Liger, he fits out of it again. Oh my goodness. This is an incredible match. Both of these men showing every single thing they've got. And I agree with the fans. This is awesome. Jushin Liger, the master of professional wrestling, three decades in the business, Silverlight, the young stud. <laughs> this fan shouting fight forever. Well, we got another hour, so I guess we could do it for another hour. But pretty much these two, these two competitors, they could probably fight for another hour. Jushin Liger now, arm drag straight. 
to the canvas. What are these men going to do to put each other away? They're taking everything they could possibly do in their arsenal. No, I said arsenal people. Most people think I say asshole, but arsenal. Jushin Lager getting an ovation from the crowd. As now Jushin Lager goes to the outside with Silver Knight. Silver Knight with the back body drop right to the outside. Also done that. These two men not really done many things outside of the ring, but they don't really need to. The incredible wrestling ability that they have had in this match with an astronomical. Got the right hands now. Silver Knight. Roughly at a count of five now. These burn men to get in the ring. Get it back in. And you should like it now. Look at a punch. Silverlight. Referee's at a count of seven. And a bulldog from Silverlight. Right onto Jushin Liger. Jushin Liger with a big old knee from Silverlight. Jamming into his lower back. Jushin Liger now with the right hand. Looks like Silverlight was going for a belly to belly. Subex and another. <laughs> Once again, back and forth action. Did you ever expect anything like this? From these two competitors and a spine buster. The fourth spine buster in this match from Silverlight. Is this it? Is this what Silverlight needs to do to regain the FWC Ignition Champion Brightest Light Connects? Is this the end of this match? Has he put Jushin Liger away? Going for the pin now. One, two, what? Oh my goodness, Jushin Liger kicked out of the brightest light again. One of the most devastating moves in all of professional wrestling. What the hell does Silverlight have to do to put Jushin Liger away and retain that Ignition Championship? What is going through the mind of Silverlight? You tried four spine busters, two brightest lights on Jushin Liger, and Jushin Liger kicked out of all three of them here we go why so we hadn't seen the Romero special the surfboard surfs up and this is a devastating move as Jushin Liger just bends the lower back of Silverlight but Silverlight gets out of it he springs out of it and a big old clothesline from Jushin Liger is Jushin Liger looking to add the ignition championship to his list of accolades that's a pin now from silverlight to Dushin Liger two count and out of it once again this match now has gone nearly 25 minutes as these two are two caged animals looking to see which one is gonna quit which one is gonna give up first two dogs scrapping in a fight the resilience of these men is incredible and now Jushin Liger with Silverlight I think he's looking for a high risk move the suplex he drives him and he lands straight down only in small inch from the announce table gonna let it straight through that look at that the pain and the devastation of the suplex at five feet in the air from that corner turnbuckle right to the dam outside. Jushin Liger now dragging Silverlight into the middle of this ring. Silverlight bargained more than he thought he would with Jushin Liger. Look at these men. When one man has a move for the other, the reciprocating man fires and a roll up in here by Jason Liger. Silverlight kicks out once again. The reciprocating man has a move straight back for the other competitor. If there's any kid out there, any boy or girl that wonders why they should be in the professional wrestling game, who wonders? What kind of match they should show to people to show the magnitude of this business. This is the match you want to see. Silverlight, Jushin Liger, FWC Edition Champion. But the 
question here that all the crowd is into is who's going to win this match? Who is going to give up first? What move, what submission is ultimately going to take this man out of this match? And a big suplex now from Silverlight to Jushin Liger. You can see a little bit of frustration now from Silverlight as he uses those kicks and uses those right hands as Silverlight drags back to the Irish whip from Jushin Liger giving it back to him as a beautiful jump kick watch those knees those knees that Jushin Liger has worked on early in this match by slamming those cameras a couple of times as a close line from Silverlight straight to Jushin Liger once again Jushin Liger back and forth these men in an all-out damn war the scrap is real here as Jushin Liger just wipes Silverlight like he was stuck to his boot look at these two men the stamina as a belly to belly suplex from Jushin Liger this is where the stamina here starts to lag where it starts to catch up with him as Jushin Liger he's going up for the Liger Bob and it connects is Jushin Liger gonna be the new FWC ignition champion as he goes for the pin one two Oh my god, oh, oh. that was like two and seven nights of a freaking near three. My god, Silverlight is still alive. He is still well in this match. As Jushin Liger's gonna think to himself, what in the hell do I have to do to put this kid away? And now an uppercut from Silverlight. These two men are now up in from Silverlight. And Jushin Liger kicks out. Oh my goodness. Silverlight kicked out of the Liger bar. I guess they're one apiece now as each man has kicked out of their finishing move. Not really a finishing move as he hasn't put the damn men away. Silverlight now. Beautiful spine buster again. The fifth one of the evening. The fifth spine buster and now Silverlight gonna try a sharp shooter but Jushin Liger is too close to the ropes. The fifth spine buster for Silverlight on Jushin Liger. Both men are gonna be crippled in pain, gasping for breath and now Silverlight has got that submission locked in on Jushin Liger. He's grabbing that right leg, he's checking it back directing his damn foot to his face the referee looking if Jushin Liger he hasn't tapped he hasn't submitted he's out he's out he's done oh my goodness Jushin Liger passed out the referee cut it off Silverlight has retained Silverlight has retained the FWC Ignition Championship, oh my god, I have never seen a match quite like that. That is going to be one of the greatest matches I've ever seen in the FWC. Five Spine Busters from Silverlight, three Liger Bombs from Jushin Liger, submissions and all, both men would not quit. In fact, Jushin Liger never even tapped out, he passed out. Silver line, the victor in this match. But I don't think it matters who the victor is. Because these two men put on one hell of a damn show tonight. You see again, Jushin Liger doesn't even tap. He doesn't even tap. The referee calls it off because Jushin Liger doesn't respond. Jushin Liger almost passes out from the pain the insanity that anybody can pass up from that pain and not even quit that is incredible and shows you the mastery of Jushin Liger call the cops because these two kids just stole the damn show and you can feel that Silverlight has had one hell of an earned title defense and one hell of a victory but the number one thing coming out of this match is Silverlight retains the Ignition Championship but Jushin Liger passes out from the pain doesn't even tap that is not a quitter
Silverlock continues his reign as FWC Ignition Champion as Silverlight celebrates in the ring. You can see Jushin Liger getting us to his knees. He's alive and well. He's heading towards the ring here. Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Silverlight, Jushin Liger, shaking hands. These are the moments that live on in history. And after that exhausting match, coming up next, we have the debut of Jim Carrey's new show, In Living Color. Coming up next, don't you dare go nowhere. We are back here at Take the Stage. Coming up later on tonight, four ladies challenging for the Women's Championship. Paige Van Zandt, Lucy Liu, Zoe Saldana, Celeste Barnin. Oh, Celeste Barnin has got one hell of a task ahead of tonight at that ultimate match. Three women gunning for a championship. But here we go to Jim Carrey for In Living Color. Sure was. Kevin Hart here in the FWZ. Holy Mac with the highest earning grossing comedian, whatever word you want to say, in the entire world. And he is signed to the FWZ. Jim Carrey had been teasing a signee for weeks. And it was Kevin Hart. The rumors are true. <laughs> hey! The D are indeed coming as we will crown new FWZ Tag Team Champions here as Tenacious D take on Suchi Blade. These are the last two participants in the tag team tournament. The question is, who's going to walk away with those titles? Come on, Paige. We can do this. Masterpiece time, baby. Come on, we can beat him. We got shit he's never seen. That's it. Yeah. That's it. He submits. That is it. It is no, What? He tapped. We're a ship without a storm. The cold without the warm Light inside the darkness that it means, yeah We're a laugh without a tear The hope without the fear Gucci Blade is going to be going on to face Tenacious D for the FWZ Tag Team Championship where the winner will be crowned the champions. This is the greatest band in the world. Takanori and Shinsuke Suchi Blade. We're up to the witch. We may never, never, never come home. But the magic that we feel is worth a lifetime. We're all bound upon the cross. Worth a throw before the toss. You can release yourself, but the only way. Smokey, can you believe the way that these guys wrestle? Who would have thought Tenacious we D come 
could wrestle like this and the power of that core as well. This is what professional wrestling is all about. Four men doing the same thing to win a pretty prize in the back of Here we go. This is a team match with one ball of the Sunday Invest. The C Tag Team Champions. First of all, what do you mean at 490 pounds? From Los Angeles, California, I am Jack. Jack Black, the Nation's D. The ovation for Tenacious D as the crowd loves some of that D. But the question is, can Tenacious D do the unthinkable? Can they win and take home the FWC Tag Team Championship? They got to get through this team first. I hear a almost strange mixed reaction for these two, but they're not bad guys. Suchi Blade, the Kurama's tag team in the FWZ for 10 years. They've been trained in some of the best dojos in Japan. Could be the people are on the side of the D. Although Suchi Blade showed a little bit of arrogance recently. It's almost diminishing Tenacious D. But they don't have what it takes to win the Tag Team Championships. Simply because the celebrities and Suchi Blade are technical wrestling technicians. But, as we've seen week after week, do not underestimate Tenacious D. They have wrestling ability that even I didn't even know they had. Kyle Gass starting off with Takanori. Takanori, a technician at the tag team game. As you can see now, Takanori putting in those stiff kicks to Kyle Gass. Got to watch out for those stiff kicks from Sushi Blade as they are dangerous. They will come swinging at you like a baseball bat. But the heart the determination, the courage of Kyle Gass as JB Jack Black is tagged in the maker and the lead of Jablinski Games we've seen in recent weeks Jack Black with an impressive claw that he lacks and latches on to his competitor as Takanori tags in Shinsuke tags him in and again the crowd that mixed reaction again I wonder what it is this crowd almost turning a little bit to, to Suchi Blade. Nonetheless, Suchi Blade, one of the best technicians. As Shinsuke's looking in. For that submission on Jack Black. Regardless of what he's saying, sick of Suchi Blade. The matter of fact is Suchi Blade, one of the best tag teams of the FWC. Quite frankly, in the whole of professional wrestling. It's Jack Black now. Locks on the right leg as he puts Shinsuke and a submission move as Shinsuke counters out of it once again. So what is it that Tenacious D are going to pull out of the bag to take these two down? They're going to have to pull a lot out of the bag. They want to take these guys down. This is what I was talking about. Those stiff kicks from Shinsuke directly into the head of Jack Black. And I will trip down to the corner. Shinsuke once again a tag to Takanori. It's a double team move. And big elbows from Sushi Blade down to Jack Black. Carl Gas, he's begging, he's asking for the tag. But Takanori has cut off Jack Black. Just in the corner there. As Jack Black needs to get to that corner. And he's looking for Carl Gas to save his bacon there. As a beautiful suplex from Jack Black. Straight to Takanori. Takanori counters it straight again. Sweeps the legs from under him. As you see, this is what makes Suchi Blade dangerous. As you see that backwards kick there, you can see the athleticism from Tukadori and Suchi Blade. They are no one you want to underestimate either. Jack Black there. With his big legs. 
Dalvin in and using the elbows on the head of Takanori. And now Jack Black, Irish whipping Takanori to the corner as Kyle Gass <laughs> makes his entrance once again as they both run in as you see Holy mackerel, the power of Tenacious D as they slam Tukanori. Now Tukanori's begging for that tag to Shinsuke. That was a beautiful tag team from Tenacious D as they just lose all their power to slam Tukanori right into the middle of the ring. Shinsuke now in this match. Tag from Tukanori. Shinsuke wants a piece of Kyle Gass. That's Kyle Gass. Takes Shinsuke on the ring and swifts him straight back in. Shinsuke's got Kyle Gass on top of his shoulders as a big kick straight to the face of Kyle Gass. This is what these teams are all about. Taking the opponent, grabbing him on that side of the ring and putting in the kicks, the stiff kicks and the strikes. The strikers that are Suchi Blade. That's not Kyle Gass. Is looking and drives Shinsuke says straight into the top turnbuckle. As now, it almost seems like Suji Blades in a world of trouble. Ooh, Takanori straight in with a big knee and a drop kick now to Carl Gass. And another drop kick from Takanori into Carl Gass once again. Carl Gass showing the determination of what Tenacious D is all about in this ring. There's a couple of white strikes from Carl Gass. Carl Gass lifting Takanori for a pile driver. Now Carl Gass picks up. Well, took an orange to store that. You see a beautiful pile driver there from Kyle Gass. Drop and took an orange right in his freaking head. Big close up from Tokanori. And another one. Oh, and he just uses those legs, those smart legs to see where you think Tokanori's going. But Jack Black have been tagged in this match. Jack Black's in this match once again with Tokanori and Jack Black. Jack Black with the clothesline. Jack back can smell the end of the road. He can smell success. He can smell the Tenacious D are uh, just now minutes away from being tag team champions. That is, if Suchi Blay has anything to say about it, as they can put a block in those plans. Tokanori with a side slam straight to Jack Black. Jack Black's on his own here. It was Carl Gass on the outside, a little bit out. But Shinsuke from the team of Suchi Blade is still on the outside. Tokanori has got a lifeline here if he needs it. That's Tokanori. Looking to use as much strikes as he can against Jack Black. Jack Black looking for a kick but a counter from Takanori. Dragging him to his side of the ring with Shinsuke. As you see, oh come on. Look at the kicks in the corner as he just drives his kicks. And now Shinsuke's in to drive the same damn kicks into Jack Black. And now Takanori's back in the ring to open up a weapon on Jack Black in the corner. Jack Black is in trouble. As Shinsuke now drives in with the kicks. Shinsuke Takanori have just. Could this be enough to put him away? A two count. And he kicks out. And now Carl Gass is in this match. Trying to break the pin up. But Takanori cut him off. Jack Black is in a whoa, whole world of hurt. As Shinsuke and Takanori are putting the kicks. But Jack Black shows the smallest bit of heart. As he's dragging him down. He's trying everything he can to make sure that he... That's the upper hand on Suchi Blade. Shinsuke now drops down to his knees, grabs. You're wondering where I was going there. <laughs> Shinsuke now with a drop kick from Jack Black. As Jack Black sees that he is on fire. He's showing the momentum. He is ready to be tag team champion. The one title that these team have not won. The title that people say you can't do it. You cannot be tag team champions. You're not serious enough. But Tenacious D know that they have something that these two don't have, and that is the heart and determination of champions. And now Jack Black's got the claw locked in. He's got the claw locked in. That padded move into Shinsuke. Carl Gass now on the outside, taking Takanori and slapping him right down on the outside. A little bit of smart moves there as Kyle Gass has gone over to Takanori and now locking it in. Jack Black has got the damn claw. The Von Eric Black claw checked in on Shinsuke. Will he tap? Will he tap? Jack Black losing all the power. He taps. He's done. Oh my goodness. Tenacious D have won the FWZ Tag Team Championship. 
They did it! They freaking did it! Suchi Blade said, Tenacious D, get serious. And that is exactly what they did. They were serious enough to put a submission move onto Shinsuke and now win the Tag Team Championship. Holy mackerel. Jack Black was in trouble when he was getting pummeled in the corner by Suchi Blade taking it in turns. But that was not enough for Jack Black as he took all the courage he could to get back up to not quit, to not lay down, to get back up and keep fighting until every last breath is out of your lungs. Carl gets on the outside, taking Takanori out, and it was then that Jack Black locked in the claw onto Shinsuke. Tenacious D, top of the tag team ladder, as now Tenacious D are FWZ tag team champions. Congratulations to Tenacious D, the people, and even myself were included at time. Happy that Tenacious D became Attack Team Champions. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Jamco here, Ringsa, the FWZ faithful. And what a show it has already been. Holy mackerel, what an incredible night. We have new tag team champions in Tenacious D. We've had a show stealer of a match in the Ignition Championship match between Silverlight and Jushin Liger. And a number one contender has been determined in Brendan Fraser for the Celebrity X Championship. And a new signee in Kevin Hart. But here's the highlights from earlier tonight and the opening match of this show. Ice Cube, Frank Ocean, Brendan Fraser, and even Dr. Phil was here. And an over-the-top row battle royal for men to determine the number one contender for the Celebrity X Championship. Ice Cube getting eliminated first, which is a shock from my end. And then coming up and the rest of the match left Dr. Phil, Frank Ocean, and Brendan Fraser. But Frank Ocean... Teacher Dr. Phil Ellison, welcome in to the FWZ. He was out next, which would left Frank Ocean, Brendan Frazier, who was going to battle it out, who was going to get the next person over the top rope. Impressed me the absolute power of Brendan Frazier as he just lifts Frank Ocean up and just shoves him, chucks him straight over the top rope. Brendan Fraser will be getting an opportunity at the Celebrity X Championship. And also we found out Tenacious D earlier on, just before the commercial break, became FWZ Tag Team Champions. We've also got a talk. As you see here at the end, Carl Gass taking out Tukanori right at the end, which gave Jack Black the opportunity to put in that claw and now we've got new tag team champions in Tenacious D. Congratulations to Tenacious D. We've also got to talk about that Ignition Championship match between Silverlight and Juice and Thunder Liger. Holy mackerel, I've never seen anything so incredible in my life. Those two wrestled for nearly half an hour as they gave every single thing they had, every single ounce of energy in their body, the student, the master, Five spine busters, three Liger bombs, ults, and every submission you can think of in the book. And the number one topic coming out of this match is at the end submission, Silverlight put on to Jushin Liger. 
And Jushin Liger didn't even submit. He just passed out. Absolutely incredible match. Quite frankly, one of the best matches I've ever seen. And the FWZ, an absolute show stealer. Jushin Liger's first ever appearance at the FWZ. And one impressive debut it technically is. The 30-year veteran. And here it is. A silver light. Puts in the submission. Jushin Liger just passes out from the pain. The insanity of that before. He could even tap out. Which proves. The toughness of Jushin Liger. What a highly. Fantastic. Title defense. By Silver Light. Retains. The FWZ Ignition Championship. And this is a beautiful moment at the end. That I love. Jushin Liger. Showing the student respect. The respect from the master. I don't think there's no argument. That that was one of the greatest matches. Quite frankly. In the FWZ. Well wrestling fans. Coming up next is our penultimate match. Four women. Who all have a ticket. To becoming FWZ Women's Champion. Can Celeste Bond in. Keep her championship. Tonight. That is the face of a lady that is not happy. 
As they whoa. Whoa, 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 she's coming back in the ring. Oh, oh, she's going in for some payback. Fisherman suplex there says, oh, he's out there. And then we get a backward suplex to Lucy Lou. Paige is on fire. She is frustrated that she's lost a few of these matches now. That's a big giant suplex. No, she's picking a, a bad loser. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. She's face to face with the champ now. I don't think Celeste Bonin is going to suffer the same fate. Can you really trust her now? Because she, you see what she did when you. Well, they, Wait a second. They're face to face now. They get each other's face. And now they're fighting. The train punches back and forth. They just want to fight. They just want to beat the hell out of each other. Kid Rock up on the Titan Tron. Zoe Saldana has got a shot at the Women's Championship. Oh, wait. What? Oh my goodness, Celeste Barnett, hold on to that title real tight as you have to defend it against three other women, Paige, Lucy, and Zoe, in a four corners match at Take the Stage. Smokey, you've got like a 0% chance of keeping that title, right? I think she's out. So let's go in for the cover, for the three cut. And here we go. See, what did I say? Lucy Lou's been impressive since debuting here in the FWC. But this is the penultimate match of the evening. And four ladies want to get their hands 
on the women's championship. Lucy Liu and Zoe Saldana forming an alliance. Taking it to Celeste Bonin, the women's champion. Taking it to Paige Van Zandt. But are they going to be able to be a cohesive unit in this match? They can't be dual champions. They can't be co-champions. Only one of them can be champion. Are they going to team up in this match? Or... Are they going to have to let bygones be bygones? And let it be every woman for herself. That should be to get the title. And here's one tough son of a gun <laughs> in the women's group. Paige Van Zandt. One thing that I want to address. I know a lot of fans believe that because Paige Van Zandt is on a losing streak that she's not worthy to be in this match. She's not worthy to face for the women's championship but I don't think people realize just what this woman is capable of Percy, I think there's only one woman that can stop Paige Van Zandt from getting her hands on that championship, and that is the women's champion right there, Celeste Barnin, who has been the women's champion since we came back to YouTube on the FWZ Collection channel. Do not underestimate Paige Van Zandt. I think she's going to be one diamond that you better be aware of. But, regardless, <laughs> you can hear the crowd trying for women's wrestling damn right these women gonna put on one hell of a performance tonight Celeste Barnin has a 25% chance of keeping her championship so her game plan has to be real simple watch everyone look at everyone and make sure that she keeps her eye on anybody that's got a pin as she does not need to be pinned for that championship she's got more of a task than the others whereas the others just need to pin another woman whereas she needs to make sure that the pins do not happen Lucy Lou now knocking Paige Van Zandt outside of the ring Celeste Bon in and Zoe Zaldana in the middle of the ring. Oh, what a big old clothesline from Zoe Zaldana. The one thing you got to watch out for in this match is who's going to be the one to get the pinfall. Celeste Bonin with an Irish whip. So Zoe Zaldana in the corner again. Celeste Bonin knocks her head on the freaking turnbuckle. There's a pinfall here from Zoe Saldana. This is what I was talking about earlier. But just a near foul there. It looks like Zoe Saldana and Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou just punching a friend in the face. And now Zoe Saldana's going back. And I guess the whole alliance thing's out of the window. As Zoe Saldana and Lucy Lou are going against each other. 
There's no friends, there's no alliances when it comes to gold, when it comes to championships. And that's what it's all about, the prestigious FWZ Women's Championship. The old Horikarana. There's always Aldana. Lucy Liu. Question is, is Celeste Bonin going to be keeping a Women's Championship tonight? Lucy Liu and Zoe Zodana point out the fact that Paige Van Zandt has lost all of her matches in the FWC. But it's not as easy as that. Paige Van Zandt, the sole person in the ring tonight, knocking out all the things. This is what I was talking about, knocking out all the ladies. Paige Van Zandt may have lost matches, but there's no doubting that Paige Van Zandt brings the viciousness, brings the pain, brings the power. The woman was successful in the octagon. The USC, and look at that splash there from Zoe Saldana. Comes to the ring, jumps straight at her. As I believe, there's no underestimating Paige Van Zandt. Paige Van Zandt, nearly 23 years old. She's still young in this business. Oh my goodness, a rebound there. That Paige Van Zandt put from Zoe Saldana on the ropes. Another splash there from Zoe Saldana onto Paige Van Zandt. The women's group. Where do we go on the pinfall? Just a one count there from Zoe Saldana. The women's group heating up in the FWZ. All the women in the locker room looking to show what they're all about. And that's what I like to see. The women show that they can outperform the men. And that their performances are much better than the men's group. Celeste gone in, Lucy Lou back and forth. There's always all done now in this match. Wanna thank you once again. Bulldog from Lucy Lou to Celeste Barn in. Wanna thank you again to all the fans watching on the FWZ Collection Channel Live. All the fans around the world. And once again, big back body drop to Paige Van Zandt. Now look at Lucy Liu just taunting there, sort of what she's all about. So let's buy in taking Lucy Liu out of the ring. I mentioned to all the fans watching around the world on the FWZ, whether you're watching it live or you watch it the next day on demand on YouTube. My fans in North America and Mexico to South America and Brazil, all across Europe to fans that we've got in Germany, France and Italy also in Myanmar as well and Peru the United Arab Emirates and Argentina especially for Germany listen out later on we've got a special announcement to where the FWZ is coming to near you in Germany but the number one task at hand here is the women's match but who's going to be the FWZ Women's Champion Paige Van Zandt taking a taking Lucy Liu to task right now. The pinfall from Paige Van Zandt. So let's bot in comes in. Oh, she was almost a fingertip away from losing that Women's Championship. Paige Van Zandt now back body job once again. You can see the suplexes that Paige Van Zandt gives. This is the underestimation that I'm talking about. She's not a woman that is simply bad because she lost a few matches. After the match, she takes the damn opponent and she still clicks the hell out of him as she sees right here. And as you see, Paige Van Zandt has dominated most of this match. And so now Paige Van Zandt, no one to break it up. A pin on Zoe Zaldana. Looks less bond is coming in. But managed to get there just in time. And now Paige Van Zandt taking care. A less bond is standing tall once again. It's Paige Van Zandt. She has dominated through this match. So let's pawn in. Close lines. Paige Van Zandt out of the ring. Now Zoe Zaldana. So let's pawn in the middle of the ring. Zoe Zaldana got big Samoan slide drop right there. Oh, so let's pawn in from Zoe Zaldana. She's got the pin now. Will anybody break it up? Lucy Liu's back in the ring to break it up. I saw it's Paige Van Zandt. The question is, who is going to be the one? Let's take all of these women down. Every time you make a pinfall, every 
everybody's there to do so. And look at Celeste Barnier and just pummeling Lucy loose heads the damn top turn by holy mackerel. Slinging her around like a damn ragdoll. And look at that big old arm for those big biceps. The next triceps from Celeste Barnier. She just knocks the holy hell out of Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou over the past few weeks thinking that she's going to become women's champion. Do a successful wins. But it doesn't matter how many matches you've won, how many matches you've lost. It's this match right here. Lucy Lou is going to try to use those ropes to get the pin, but Paige fans that sniffed it and got it out. Only matters about who gets a pinfall in this match. That determines who's going to be the women's champion. It's Celeste Barnett and Paige Van Zandt, who I know can put on a show. Both of them together. And now Celeste Barnett has got Zoe Zaldana on the ropes. Going for a clothesline outside of the ring. And Celeste Barnett, is she looking to go outside? Looking to fly up, and holy mackerel, she dives right over the top rope onto Zoe Zaldana. Look at this again. Look at the stamp speed and the flight. And once again, Celeste Barnett jumping straight over. The damn ropes are high flying. Celeste Barnin with a height. One over. Went out Celeste Barnin, Paige Vance, and this is where the real, real rivalry kicks in. These two women beating the hell out of each other a few weeks ago on Event Horizon. These two want a piece of each other. So this barn is now on the side. And now Paige Van Zandt. She's got Lucy Lou. She's got him in that submission. She's locked her in. She's got it hooked. Oh my goodness. Paige Van Zandt has put Lucy Lou in a dangerous position. Lucy Lou with her arms flaming around. Is she going to tap? Oh my God. She tapped. She freaking tapped. Paige Van Zandt tapped out. Lucy Lou. Paige Van Zandt to do. Paige Van Zandt has done the unthinkable. She has won the FWC Women's Championship. Oh my goodness. People thought she couldn't do it. She couldn't win that match. And she's proved them all wrong. And she's done it right here at Take The Stage. She's won the Women's Championship. Look at this submission hold. She got Lucy Liu. Lucy Liu in the wrong place at the wrong time. And she taps out to the submission move that Paige Van Zandt is so techniqued in. Paige Van Zandt winning the FWZ Women's Champion. The previous champion now, Celeste Barnier, didn't even get pinned. She didn't even submit. Congratulations to Paige Van Zandt. Uh. What? What's going on? Oh my god, the beast is here and take the stage. Hell have no fury like a woman scorn and the beast is walking down the ramp. The beast Heading towards the ring, Paige Van Zandt is the biggest slab of meat to the beast. Oh, wait a minute, she's got a hand on the women's champion. Oh my God, she just slams her down. The beast has slammed the women's champion. Paige Van Zandt, your reign has just started, and it started with a statement.
takes perseverance, takes more than ears to hear it, takes more than tears to feel it, takes more than pain to heal it, regain your spirit, don't take your time, gotta face your grind, gotta take your mind and clear it, no time to kill, you got the skills behind the wheel, not steer it, I tried being lazy, it really wasn't me, cause a man that doesn't work, that's a man that doesn't eat, and I can see my future obstacles preparing their defeat, cause I'm standing in the mirror, but I'm staring at a beast, can't face defeat, and I can't be weak, because the struggle is tough, gotta bring that heat, get back to your feet, and say enough is enough, say I fell to the ground, looked around, and I found that I was down on my luck, so step my game, I pride my confidence in stamina up, now I'm smashing all my foes, I'm passing all my foes, I got passion and it shows, go, go, get you, reach my goals, if you came to see greatness, then pass me the mic, this is what my mama told me when I asked for advice. We're back here at FWZ Take the Stage Rocks Foundation and Holy Mac are what just happened before the commercial break. After the Women's Championship match, the Beast arrived here in the FWZ and she laid out the Women's Champion Paige Van Zandt. Only moments from her winning the championship. The outlook of the women's group just changed drastically. So Corey Taylor is not here, so the Briscoe brothers might have just have to do this one alone in a match against the Foundation, if that makes it three on two. I said I'd update you about Corey Taylor, but I still have had nothing to say that he's here. I don't know what the hell is going to happen, but we want to switch on to something. We want to let you fans know. We want to show you some highlights of when the FWZ was represented in this year's Core All-Stars this past summer. The last time an FWZ wrestler was at Core All-Stars was in 2008, when the very first Core All-Stars took place. The representative this year was World Champion, the FWZ World Champion of the World, Jet Tornado, took on four men in a four corners match from members of the wrestling promotions BLC, SNW, IFW. I was there live. I was on hand to call this match at the prestigious event with SNW's Kevin Irons. And it was our own Jet Tornado who made one hell of an impression in this match. Here's some highlights. Chuck Osborne, one hell of a specimen in this match who took Jet Tornado to task. Yet the strong striker of Ghost who nearly hit Jet Tornado's freaking head off. And the athlete, the one hell of a high flyer. Aaron Gordeski, but it was Jet Tornado who came out victorious and won the whole damn match. And that showcased the same event that the new core All Stars champion Ben Hopkins, the Big Mac, was declared one of the most prestigious championships in the world of professional wrestling. Congratulations to him and congratulations to Jet Tornado. We want to thank Core All Stars for inviting us to this year's event and who knows what the future holds for our relationship with Core All Stars. Unfortunately, fans, I'm going to have to talk to you about one not so positive thing that happened tonight at this event in some of our highlights of earlier in this show in the tag team match between Yuke and Jack and Outcast. when quite frankly, I still can't even get over it. Yuke shocked the world and turned on his tag team partner. Quite frankly, I still don't even know why and, and what the hell this was all about. I think he had this planned all along. Maybe it was a, a, a spell of the moment thing. But the matter of fact is, these guys were friends. These guys were partners for 10 whole years. You don't just turn on your tag team partner like that. And then the ma matter of fact that he had to go to these extremes to take out Jack, I still don't even know what the hell to say or what even even to think. Absolute shock. He just focused on that arm and he just went off. And he, I don't even know if he's ended Jack's damn career. I have been told that Jack has been taken away from this arena to work on the arm. I don't know the status of his arm, how he's doing, but I'm hopefully by the next time that we get to Event Horizon, 
we can hopefully find out but it is now time for the main event of this spectacular event the foundation taking on Corey Taylor and the Briscoe brothers this all started when the foundation made it their mission to let everyone know that they are in control of the FWZ Sure, 
Jet Tornado and Jet Li did not see that coming. They are all on the same page, and I'm damn happy about this. Finally, after weeks of the Foundation taking out whoever they see fit to, the tables have turned and a new resistance has begun. In Corey Taylor and the Briscoe Brothers. Can they deliver?
<laughs> Back going up, WZ take the stage, Rockstar. Oh, wait a minute, what the hell is he doing here? He's not even a part of FWZ. My mom's name is Hey Paulman. And my name is Paul Heyman. And I am the advocate for the beats. The cock. Brat. The cock. Fucker. <laughs> and meanwhile, tonight, in Zeus Sex Chippy. My client, Paul Heyman, has authorized me to enlighten you, to enlighten me, has authorized you on the term And as any educated, qualified psycho would surely testify on my behalf, that is exactly what has been exhibited by your your hero, Josh Cease. I find it ironic that Brock Lesnar is running 72 full miles for the specific purpose of declaring himself the hardest car in history. Brock Lesnar stands before you and says, Eat, sleep, steal, another man, repeat. Look how far everyone has gone to crucify Paul Lesnar for tooting, and yet Paul Lesnar is not the number one tutor in the land. Man. Oh my god. Paul Lesnar is a distant number two because the biggest tutor in the land is a, is a, is a joint that is held jointly by Brock Heyman and Paul Lesnar. <laughs> what? The winner of that match should hop on a pipeline to my focus and subject themselves to my car. That's the fate that awaits any man that tries to shit. That tries to take the chest away from the beast, the cock, the radio, the fitness, undisputed, hella chest of the world, world, world. Brock Heyman. I don't even know what to say. Welcome back to Take the Stage Rocks Foundation Live from New York City. It is made of end time. And there are a couple of tough southern boys 
who are ready to take on the foundation. These two men being taken out by that big tank Korean Sunabe week after week. This all started on the very first edition of FWZ Event Horizon for our comeback. Kid Rock, the owner of this company, the owner of FWZ, did everything that he could to protect his legacy, to protect his camp, his foundation. And anybody that wanted to challenge the foundation would get fed to Sunay. He put the world champion on Jet Tornado. He screwed over Corey Taylor for Jet Li, another member of the foundation, to become Celebrity X champion. This match is all about control and the FWZ and the foundation want to control the FWZ. the ring announcer 768 pounds and at this rate it seems to be a five-man tag team match the six-man tag team match Corey Taylor is still not here in the arena he hasn't showed up whatsoever so the Briscoe brothers are gonna have to go this alone the celebrity X champion Jet Li the heavyweight champion of the world Jet Tornado and the one you ought to look out for, nearly 500 pounds. The Korean tank name as Jay Briscoe starts it off. No time to waste. Going straight off to Jet Tornado. Going after Sunabe. So he gets a piece of Jet Li. Emotions are going to be flying high in this match. And this is all personal to every single one of these people. Every single one of these superstars in this ring has a bone to pick. With the FWZ, see Jet Tornado trying to get involved in this match. Referee needs to make sure he stays on the damn apron. Nothing is as it seemed to the foundation. They always seem to have some sort of plan. Always have each other's back. As Je Jay Briscoe's in the corner with Jet Li. Jay Briscoe again smacking Jet Li. With a big 200 pounds. And now he just rebounds Sue Naves head off the damn rope. And now he's to Jay Briscoe with a drop kick from Jet Li. Jay Briscoe now with a big clothesline. And now Jay Briscoe once again going after Sunave. Jay Briscoe going after Jet Tornado. Jet Tornado running his mouth once again as Jet Tornado is out with Sunave. It looks like Jay Briscoe wants a piece of every single one of them. Remember, it's the foundation that took out Jay Briscoe on that very first episode and had him out for weeks. As now Jet Tornado and Sunabe going after Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe's alone as he goes after these two as Jet Tornado. Sidewalk slam to the damn outside. Jet Lee's trying to get a piece of this. As Jay Briscoe fights back against Jet Tornado. But he's not enough. But Sunabe, that big 500 pounder. But Mark Briscoe is here and he's on top of the rope. And he's going to dive on the foundation. A big elbow drop to Sunave as it knocks him down. Now the Briscoe brothers have Sunave as Jet Tornado's coming into this. Mark Briscoe and Jet Tornado. Sunave and Jay Briscoe beating the hell out of each other. And this match is still on. All hell's broken loose here. Jay Briscoe wants a piece of that Korean Sunave who took him up in the very first episode. Mark Briscoe come after Jet Tornado and I bet he's pretty damn happy Jet Lee in the ring. Now what? What's...
What the hell is going on here? He's here! Corey Taylor is finally here! About damn time! Corey Taylor has transformed and he wants a piece of the foundation! This crowd can't believe it, Corey Taylor is here, he is finally here, this is going to be the six-man tag that it was, but the question is, Corey Taylor is still going to go against the foundation, he's going to have to scrap his way if he wants to go against this dominant force of Sudeb. Corey Taylor now has got the comeback. He's got the comeback. He's going after Sunebe. He's going after Jet Tornado. Corey Taylor as Sunebe just throws him back. There's two on one assault to Corey Taylor as Corey Taylor just came the hell out of nowhere. Sunebe tosses Corey Taylor out of the ring. Jet Tornado thinks he's pretty full of himself. That's what Jet Lee did when Corey Taylor ambushed him again out of nowhere. Sunay with a scoop slam to Corey Taylor. Not sure the Briscoe Bulls are pretty damn happy about this. Sunay has Corey Taylor on his back and lands him face first straight onto the steel steps. Jet Tornado now going back and forth with Corey Taylor. These two men want a piece of each other more than they've ever wanted in their life. Don't get no ideas, fans. Corey Taylor beating the hell out of Jet Tornado. And now Mark Briscoe comes in for Sunebe. He's going after Sunebe. He's trying to knock him down. And now he succeeds as he lands. Sunebe's head lands on the edge of the steel step. Jay Briscoe ripping the announce table. He wants to go mad. He wants to teach the foundation a lesson. This damn match is broken into one hell of a brawl. Don't tell me that Jay's going to try and put him through that table. That man is over 400 pounds. How the hell are you going to lift him? The Briscoe brothers both looking to take out Sunebe first. It's a smart idea, but can they do it? Jay Briscoe is putting him on the announce table. Oh my God, he's not. Jay Briscoe, that man, is twice your weight. 400 pounds! Holy mackerel! Straight through the table! Jay Briscoe has planted Sunebe through the table. Look at this. That man is over 400 pounds. The strength, the power of Jay Briscoe is insane. The Briscoe brothers now have taken both Sunebe out. This is a smart decision. This is a smart move. Now the Briscoe brothers have a chance. It goes back to three on two, but on the foundation's favor for Corey Taylor and the Briscoe Brothers' failures. Now, Corey Taylor, the Briscoe Brothers just have Jet Tornado and Jet Li. A very smart move by the Briscoe Brothers. And now you see Corey Taylor in the ring getting a piece of Jet Tornado, unleashing the power as Corey Taylor just transformed here tonight. Not the usual Corey Taylor we're used to seeing. Corey Taylor's in that band Slipknot. And so, has almost transformed into a, a completely different person. And now look at Corey Taylor driving that knee into the head of Jet Tornado. Corey just beating the hell out of Jet Tornado. The pin now from Corey Taylor. Just a one count there from Corey Taylor. Good Grab Jet Tornado back in. A big headbutt by Jet Tornado. Corey Taylor in the ring. 
with the heavyweight champion of the world. Big spine buster there. By Jet Tornado. Jet Tornado, one of the most... <laughs> Jet Tornado with a big right hand, big left hand on Corey Taylor, drop kick from Corey Taylor Jet Tornado, one of the, the most outspoken members of the FWZ roster he always has something to say, there's no doubt about that, but Jet Tornado has still not defended his FWZ World Champion once, not even once and a big DDT to Jet Tornado after he was given and picked given the champ as you can see Sunebo on the outside he's still out of here still outside on this announce table Jet Tornado still hasn't defended it once after being handed the championship by Kid Rock who seems to be the leader of the foundation whereas Jet Lee the celebrity ex-champion in this match who seems to have been scared off like Corey Taylor as a defended the celebrity ex champion many 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 times more times than Jet Tornado has as Jet Tornado just throws Corey Taylor to the other side of the ring Jet Li is back and now the Briscoes are back up now this match gets back to basics in the ring as Jet Tornado just shows his strength the leg strength of Jet Tornado on Corey Taylor now Jet Tornado with a couple of right hands this went from a three on two match with the Briscoe brothers and Corey Taylor being down and now the roles are reverse as now the foundation has one man down after Jay Briscoe put Tsunade through that damn table through the impressive strength of Jay Briscoe and now Jet Tornado has Corey Taylor dangling on the ropes and he fries through the second rope let drags Corey Taylor's face against the second rope Jet Tornado once again and another counter DDT from Corey Taylor as Jet Tornado lands down to the canvas Corey Taylor almost a, a possessed different person that mask seems to, to signify something I'm not sure quite what and then you saw the way he just came out of nowhere with that that weird video I mean I don't know how you call that Jet Tornado now Jay Briscoe have to move out of the way but Corey Taylor and Jet Tornado is on the outside of this ring Suneb is still out Suneb has not moved at all in front of the announce tape is here it's up to the Briscoe brothers and Corey Taylor is now Mark Briscoe is tagged into this match Mark Briscoe going after Jet Tornado Mark Briscoe ambush Jet Tornado on one of the shows of FWZ Event Horizon the week after Jay Briscoe had been taken out by Sunade well them steel chairs those steel chair shots Jet Tornado tags Jet Li into this match say what you want about Jet Li he is stiff as they come wrestling I mean well what you think I mean and in, in Kuros to him he has defended the Celebrity X Champion Chip many times but the fact of the matter is, once again, their foundation helped him win that championship. And a big old scoop, scoop slam there. Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe wants in this match. And now he attacks in Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe's in this match. And now he gets in the ring against Jet Li with some big boots. As Jet Li counters that by kicking him right into his right leg, just under his shin. Jet Li Dragon. Jay Briscoe over to the damn corner but Jay Briscoe once again kind of the attack I know Corey Taylor once in this match against Jet Li the man who took the Celebrity X Championship from him which he never got a rematch for he never got a chance the foundation helping Jet Li win that championship from Jet Li Corey Taylor having that taken from him and now Jet Tornado in this match that's Jet Li Jay Briscoe now and Jet Tornado 
back and forth. This is what happened that started this whole rivalry up. Jay Briscoe wanted a simple title shot against Jet Tornado. And it seemed like they would put every single obstacle in his way to make sure he shouldn't do it. But if you're a fighting champion, you defend against every single person. A very simple rule that Jet Tornado does not understand. But when you've got someone like Kid Rock back in you, I guess it doesn't really matter. I wish from Jet Tornado to Jay Briscoe in the corner. So Nave is still out on the outside here. Has not moved a muscle. Who knew this man could be taken out like this? Jet Tornado grabs Jay Briscoe in the corner and a tag. Back to Jet Lee. Set him up for a double team move. Flips him right over. Jet Lee now back with an Irish whip. As Jay Briscoe cuts him off once again. Got a pin attempt. Chip Tornado comes in and breaks it up. But now Mark Briscoe's in the ring. Every single person now getting in the ring. Only Mackerel. Mark Briscoe picking up Jet Tornado and dragging him right on top of the damn corner as Corey Taylor now takes a piece. Corey Taylor, Mark Briscoe, 2 on 1 attack on Jet Tornado. Jet Lee with one of them stiff kicks straight to Jay Briscoe. Jet Tornado's lying in the corner. Jet Lee with a pin to Jay Briscoe. Brock Briscoe breaks up the pin. I don't even know. So you can see Suneve again. Still out gold. That's probably what the foundation need right now. But the Briscoe brothers. Corey Taylor. Taking the opportunity. To go after the people. That protect themselves. By Suneve. Kid Rock almost couldn't continue his control of the FWZ so he had to go get himself a big Korean named Sunabe and feed every single person to the man Jay Briscoe dragging Jet Li over to the corner the side of the town I don't know how the hell we're going to keep every single one of these competitors inside this match I don't think a tag team match can even contain them. Every single person wants a piece of every single other person's match. Jet Li now gonna drag Jay Briscoe over to the corner. Jay Briscoe now with a counter. Each man wants to drag the other opponent to their side of the ring. So they can all get a piece of him. But no one's successful. Jay Briscoe now go for the tag. And it's the Mark Briscoe again. Mark Briscoe in the match against Jet Li. Mark Briscoe back in as Jet Li's fighting back. Jet Li with a super kick, but he misses. Mark Briscoe goes in for the drop kick. And a big old headbutt from Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe never underestimate that man. He is tough as they come. Similar to Jet Li. These two could beat the hell out of each other. We saw that impressive 450 splash from Mark Briscoe a couple of weeks ago when I met Arise. Holy mackerel, I never seen Mark Briscoe do a high flyer move, move like a damn cruiserweight. Jay Briscoe, just like his brother Jay, is a brawler. Uses fist for talking as a pin comes in attempt here. Jet Tornado breaks it up. Corey Taylor back in the room. Jet Lee with the upper hand. Mark Briscoe. As you see Jet Tornado once again boasting what he does best. Jet Lee with a super kick straight to Mark Briscoe. Is this it? Is this the way? No it isn't. Mark Briscoe kicks out. And now Corey Taylor has been wanting in this match for a while. Is anybody going to tag him in? Can Mark Briscoe get to Corey Taylor? And now Jet Lee going up for another super kick straight to the face. Jet Lee going for the pinfall cover. Will this do it? Jay Briscoe and Jet Tornado have got in this match. But Mark Briscoe, Mark Briscoe kicks out as Jet Tornado and Jay Briscoe now on the outside. Mark Briscoe's now 
clothesline gently outside of this ring. Oh, Briscoe. High wrist move. Top with a big old elbow, but gently misses and moves out of the way. What is it that the Briscoe brothers are going to be doing? As Mark Briscoe has got Jet Li in the sleeper hole. That pen is sleeper hole that Mark Briscoe is so commonly known for. But he was too near the ropes. And he grabbed the ropes. Mark Briscoe going down for the pen. And move with a side slam. Pile driver. Mark Briscoe now with the pen. Oh no. Oh hell no. Sue Nave is up. Sue Nave is back. And he's swinging for the fences. He doesn't give a damn who he hits. You've gone and poked the hornet's nest. And now the repercussions are coming your way. This match is breaking loose now. As Corey Taylor is on Jet Tornado. Sue Nave is dragging everybody in. When you've got a big monster like Sue Nave, you're messing with the wrong man. Jay Briscoe wants your back as Sue has got a target on you. He's going in, he's aiming, and he's going to fire. Oh my goodness, he just knocked out that damn referee. What the hell? He just knocked out Mark Briscoe. Sue Nave beating the hell out of anyone, but Jay Briscoe counters. Jay Briscoe, Sue Nave, one on one once again. As Jay Briscoe and Sue Nave are taking it to each other. Like I said, this ring cannot contain all of these men. Sue Nave almost wants a piece of Jay Briscoe playing a game of cat and mouse. As holy mackerel, Sue Nave just knocked the hell out of Jay Briscoe. That is one thing you're going to be wearing with Sue Nave. The man has got a right hand like a missile. Mark Briscoe was about to go for that pattern and move on Jet Li. Now Mark Briscoe fighting back on Sue Nave as Sue Nave comes back into the ring to disrupt the order of this match. Oh my goodness, and he just headbutted him once again. The skull on skull is insane. Wait, what the hell? What the hell is he doing? What? Cameron Black is in the arena. Cameron Black was fired from FWZ by Kid Rock this past. This past that's what the hell is he doing? Somebody get security on him. He doesn't work here anymore. And now Sue has dragged Mark Briscoe with Jay into the corner. And now, oh my God, Sue Name with the strength. That's over 600 pounds. Samoan drop onto both Briscoe brothers. Sue Name is on fire. And Cameron Black just stands there and looks on. As Sue Nave has locked his eyes on Cameron Black, almost taunting each other. Who's going to start? Oh, now the security's here to escort Cameron Black out of that damn ring. But what, 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 what is he doing? Just shoved the bodyguard out of the way. You better watch what you do. Oh, come on. Cameron Black, what are you doing? Cameron Black just hit the holy hell out of the bodyguard. Technically, he doesn't work here, so we can't find him. Cameron Black, Sue Nave. It's almost the two biggest dogs in the yard. Mark Briscoe on top. Way to get Sue Nave. Oh, and he just smacked him right in the face. Oh, my God. What a missile. Connected to the enemy. Ow. My goodness, that's going to knock you out for years. Sue Nave connecting with his fist into Mark Briscoe's face. Mark Briscoe is gone. But Jay Briscoe's now in the ring and he's going to lift the 500 pound man up for the Jay Triller. Is this it? Is this the pin that Jay Briscoe needs? Oh, what the hell is he doing here? He just broke the pin up. Kid Rock, the owner of this damn company. Jay Briscoe's almost taunting him. Oh my God, what the hell? Kid Rock just hit Jay Briscoe 
And now, what a surprise, Jet Tornado comes in to pick up the pieces. Tornado driver, and a pin, and it's over. Come on. What in the hell was that? That is some BS. The foundation have won this match. With a lot of gaga in this match. As you can see the highlights, these two teams wanted a piece of each other and they were going to do whatever was necessary to get a piece of them. Corey Taylor, nowhere to be seen at the beginning of this match. And then he shows up out of nowhere, transformed into something else. Not someone, but something. But even that wasn't enough to take it to the foundation. Corey Taylor tried all his best to bring all the might to Jet Tornado and Sunae, but it was a back and forth action that contributed to all men giving it everything they got and the amazement of Jay Briscoe as he just takes a 400 pound man and slams him in the announce table but this almost riled him up even more Cameron Black coming from out of nowhere who was fired from this company in the crowd to almost to distract Sunabe and Sunabe the power as he drops nearly over 500 pounds of both Jay and Mark Briscoe Jay Briscoe coming in to capitalize with a tsunade as his back was turned but then for some unknown reason Kid Rock comes in here to do some dirty deeds with the idea if you want something done yourself do it and do it right once again Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe, Corey Taylor screwed out of the ending of this match Jet Tornado picking up the scraps picking up the pieces of the broken Jay Briscoe to capitalize get a pinfall and win this match the foundation's reign continues as they win in the main event of FWZ take the stage Rock's foundation and look who's here to celebrate the damn stooge in the foundation. All those in favor. All those against. Well, it's unanimous. Please sign here, sir. And here. Excellent. On behalf of us all here, we would like to congratulate you on this new path. Good luck in your new role, sir.